It's time for our weekly sci-fi segment. Sci-fi segment. Welcome to the Sci-Fi Show on Game Shout. And welcome back to Game Shout Radio. This is Sci-Fi Weekly with Sci-Fi Solorif, the host with the most. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> <it's great. laughs> all right. All right. Giggity, giggity, right? <laughs> yeah. Right, all right. right. Giggity, 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 giggity. Thank you, Josh. Oh, yes. We've got some excellent fun space news for you guys today. We've been tracking a lot of the interesting Stardust probe mission that just recently came back with the, uh, the interstellar dust. We haven't received any new news from NASA regarding the analysis. It's probably going to take a very long time before they come up with any conclusive findings. But of course, they are still working on different satellite missions and different satellite technologies, including, get this, spacecraft skin that will actually heal itself. You know, Whoa. one of the big problems. Yeah, see, nice. one of the big problems uh, with space uh, satellites, once they go out into to deep space, is that they're kind of far away and you can't really bring them back into the body shop if they get nicked up or dinged or, or pierced by some rapidly moving space dust or a micrometeorite zipping along at several hundred thousand miles an hour, which could generally tear directly through a, uh, the outer casing of a spacecraft. So, the, one of the big problems, of course, is that they have to develop some sort of autonomous system that can repair the, the surfacing, the skins of these satellites in orbit, out in space or in, on deep space missions. So, these, this self-healing spacecraft skin, a lot of S's in that, uh, it's being developed by Ian Bond and Richard Trask from the University of Bristol in the United Kingdom as part of the European Space Agency's uh, projects. And they've taken inspiration from the human skin because when you get cut or, or pierced or, or otherwise wounded, um, what happens is your blood uh, goes out to the surface, it hits the air, and then it congeals and forms a protective scab. And they want to do the same sort of thing for these satellites. So in order to do that, they've come up with a similar idea by fabricating a composite laminate material containing hundreds of hollow glass filaments, only 60 microns or thousandths of a millimeter wide. So in other words, you've got this sort of fabric, if you can imagine, and woven into this fabric are millions of tiny, tiny, tiny little glass fibers. And those little glass fibers, which uh, half of them carry an epoxy polymer or resin, and the other half filled with a chemical agent that reacts with the polymer to form a very strong and hard substance. Now this is not um, completely revolutionary in, in the chemistry field. Of course, many of us here have, all, have used epoxies where you buy it in the, the hardware store, it's got two chambers, you kind of squeeze out the glue, and when the two epoxy substances combine, it actually forms a really strong, sticky, fast-drying um, substance. So they're using this same technology but weaving it into an actual fabric with all these tiny glass fi filaments and that's actually really cool because if the satellite gets hit with a micrometeorite then all these uh, little glass filaments will shatter releasing all this this uh, epoxy substance which will then uh, harden and seal off the surface of the satellite very so I think very that's cool, cool. I, I, that's, I, that's exciting you know, there's a lot of other applications for this. It could be theoretically applied to uh, submarine technology. It could be applied to even automotive or airplane technology. Uh, right now, it's really expensive to produce, so they're not planning on bringing it out on the mass market, uh, you know, right away. But they are doing a lot of tests, especially for these satellites. They've tested them in uh, in vacuums, and of course, it still works. They've tested it under unusual gravity conditions, so you don't need to have sort of the gravity pulling out the liquid. It'll still leak out and uh, secure the hole in this thing. Of course, one of the big issues that uh, NASA is is taking interest in this project is to protect their shuttles, uh, as you may. No, as you probably should know, there was a recent disaster with the Columbia shuttle, which uh, dis was destroyed on re-entry. If you happen to miss that, it was because a piece of uh, packing foam, essentially, fell from the uh, external tank during takeoff and uh, punctured the shuttle's left wing. Now, if this wing was protected by some sort of similar rapid, uh, rapid infusing epoxy substance, perhaps the shuttle would have survived re-entry or at least uh, they, they have some sort of way of knowing that uh, 
that the 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 sh shuttle did suffer damage in so you know they're looking at uh, applying this sort of self-healing technology to a lot of different uh, satellites and uh, space exploration and potentially it could come uh, you know down here on earth too we might see body armor made of this stuff can you imagine you know someone gets shot and then the uh, the epoxy comes out and seals up the wound until they can get into a hospital you know a lot of potential whoa wow there star is trek idea yeah that is very cool so uh, it, it, this is very exciting technology with so many applications. I really hope that the, uh, the this this team here in the UK gets a lot of funding, and hopefully a lot of other teams take up similar uh, research with with this technology. Well, you know, while there's a development of of good news in space, there's also some bad news in space. Uh, NASA has delayed its Dawn mission because uh, you know it's going over budget. Originally, they uh, said that this mission, which would send a satellite into the asteroid belt to inspect two of the largest asteroids, named Ceres and Vesta. Now, Vesta uh, melted early in its history, and so all of its primordial stuff sort of got mixed in together, but Ceres did not. The Ceres, it, it remains an aggregate of primordial material, including water. So researching this asteroid series could reveal a lot of secrets about the origin of the solar system. Now the, the uh, it was approved, the project, this Dawn mission was approved in December 2001 and it was supposed to cost no more than 300 million dollars including launch and mission operators, uh, operations. Well, when the launch costs rose following the Columbia disaster, NASA approved spending 371 million dollars but you know that was their limit 371 but several problems have pushed the cost upwards even further including weaker than expected tanks for holding the xenon in the ion drive and problems with the drive's power source so the project team said to nasa well we might need to go up to a 40 billion dollars sorry 40 million dollars <laughs> that that's a, a bad letter to mix up 40 million dollars further over budget taking the uh, the total cost of this mission to 411 million dollars and right now NASA is uh, in reviewing this whether or not they're going to give the go-ahead on this project and it seems kind of frustrating if you can imagine you've spent 300 million dollars on something already but you don't want to uh, spend an extra 40 I mean what are you gonna do with all that extra <laughs> spent yeah. money? So I, I guess that's one of the big problems these, these space agencies have to deal with. They start off with a, a budget on one project and it just keeps rising and rising and rising and you never know where it's going to end. Shoot a, shooting off into space. <laughs> who'd, who'd guess? Well, you know, we've got to take a quick break here, but when we come back we're going to look at whether or not um, people are genetically predisposed to seek revenge and our science in the studio experiment melting through cars with thermite. This is Game Shout Radio. We will be back right after this. You're listening to Game Shout Radio. Hey, you a big PSP fan? Then you'll love Game Shout. We've got a Pocket Players PSP Edition mini podcast that'll be right up your alley. And hey, you can even load it up on your PSP so you can listen to PSP coverage on the go. Want to stay up to date on PSP affairs? We got you covered. Want to hear how a game is before you buy it? We got that. Want to hear about new games coming out soon? That's our specialty. So be sure to find out more about the games, news, previews, and reviews that matter from the only gaming site that matters, GameShout.com. On. Hey, welcome back to Game Shout Radio. This is Science Weekly with your host, Sci-Fi Soul Rift. And in our second segment, well, we're going to be talking about some brain developments, or some, uh, not developments of the brain, but br developments in brain research. <laughs> well, you know what? Ooh, a lust, a, yes, a lust for vengeance may be hardwired into the male brain. Yes, now you know why the guys are always the ones out to get you. It's hardwired into their genes, yes. Scans of bra <laughs> brains activities suggest that men experience greater satisfaction than women in seeing cheaters get their comeuppance, at least when the punishment is physical. You know, uh, so what they did was they took a, a group of people and they, they play this sort of uh, game where you can either cooperate and win or one player can cheat against you and, and only he wins and generally most players will cooperate because the benefit from cooperation does actually exceed what you would get from from just cheating so 
what they did in order to uh, to put some cheaters into this, they actually hired several actors and they seated them into the test subject groups and the actors were instructed to cheat and effectively get everyone really pissed off at them and they were very successful. They cheated almost everyone. They got everyone really angry uh, between uh, different between the actual playing of the games, the test subjects uh, essentially separated themselves into all the normal people and all the actors because no one wanted to hang out with these actors who were cheating everyone. And then what they did was they put uh, the test subjects into an MRI scanning device and then showed them through like a one-way mirror other players that they played against. And if they, the people that they played against didn't cheat against them, then the people would just sit there in the, in the chair, and then they'd bring in the actors who did cheat, and they'd pretend to shock them. <laughs> and uh, the male brains, the male subjects who saw that the people that cheated them were getting shocked, they showed a real big activity all across the brain, um, essentially showing that they, they were lit up and excited and, you know, really enjoying seeing these guys getting shocked. I know I would. <laughs> I know, I, I, I think I would too. I'd really love to see guys that cheat me. You know, I can imagine playing these online games like Counter-Strike and then these cheaters, you know, hacking the game, zooming around, you know, getting headshots through walls. If I could see those guys strapped into the chairs, getting shocked, I'd get a real kick out of that. But it seems yeah, that... Yeah, I know. You would. Me yeah. too. I know a lot of us here would, but it seems that women are, you know, they don't seem to like, uh, they don't get off on the physical pain aspect. So there's, there's different theories about why this is. Well, it could be that women are, are less affected by the economic cheating in this particular game that they used in the test. It could be that women are less interested in physical revenge. They might be interested in psychological or social revenge. But, uh, you know, there, it's interesting to think about that. Uh, men are, are predisposed to enjoy physical torture <laughs> as opposed to the women. Well, in our science news studio experiment, I ran out and, you know, got some, some thermite. This is a, a fun little substance. Ooh, 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 goody, 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 thermite. We're going to put thermite on top of a car. Whose car did you get? Andy's? Well, you know, I just went out into the parking lot and uh, I just picked out, you know, the first car I came across, some old Saturn. Is that one, is that one yours, Josh? Oh, crap. That's my wife's car. Don't do that one. It, it's too late. We've already oh, done the experiment. No. Did you hear the explosion? Well, no. sure enough. Well, we're not actually doing thermite experiments here in the studio because thermite does burn, you know, almost, what is it, two or 3,000 degrees Celsius. Essentially, uh, it's, it's used to create molten iron. It's, an exp it's a reaction between uh, oxidized iron and aluminum. The aluminum grabs the oxygen out of it and oxidizes and deposits liquid uh, iron. I mean, that's just really hot stuff. And it was actually used during the construction of the railroads to fuse rail tracks together because uh, it's really hard to, you know, solder stuff. All you have to do is, is put some of this thermite powder, light it up, and it uh, fuses the rail tracks together. But if you do want to see the experiment of thermite being done, there is a Google video that uh, I came across doing my thermite research that shows a British uh, science show actually running several different thermite experiments including burning directly through a car into the gas tank and essentially detonating the thing. Very cool. And Mav, you'll be thrilled to know the video used a French car. Yeah! Of course. Of course. Well, what? Mon, mon voiture! <laughs> exactly. Well, if you search up on Google Video, it's called Thermite Burning a Hole in a Car. We'll also post the link to our forums here on GameShout.com if you'd like to come down and visit. It's a very cool video. It's not exactly high quality, of course. It's being uh, distributed on Google Video, but it's a very excellent thing. If you want to see Thermite melting through an engine block of a car or into the gas tank and detonating it, you have got to check out this video. Well, this has been our Science Weekly Show. I am Soul Rift, signing out. And we've got a whole lot more, though, right here on Game Shout Radio. This is Game Shout Radio, the number one talk game station in the world. Visit GameShout.com for more info. Game Shout. Game Shout.